Can anyone tell me why is it that Capcom cannot help themselves? They literally can't help themselves. They, they constantly want to go Michael Bay on Resident Evil. I generally do not understand why. Why is that? They have other genres that are far more suited for the Michael Bayism. Resident Evil is a survival horror genre. It's at its best when it's survival horror, and it's at its worst when you go with Michael Bayism. If you don't understand what Michael Bayism is, explosions, boom, 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 and fire everywhere, and, and the chick is running, and she's jumping, and more explosions, boom, 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 and lens flares, and it's like, okay, that, that is not Resident Evil. Resident Evil got a big following when it came out because it was a brand new theme. Very few games tried to do it. I think Alone in the Dark was the first one, and then you have Resident Evil and later on Silent Hill. And these were really nice because it created a horror to the gaming genre. Resident Evil 2 comes out, even it rises even more in popularity because it works on what the first one had, and it just mind blows people. And when 3 comes out, it starts going, oh, but, but it's, still, it's still great. And, and this continues until you go to Resident Evil 6, where it's at its worst. Where people are like, okay, this is crap. This is not Resident Evil. Because they went full Michael Bay on it. You even have like this ridiculous thing where a guy punches a rock in order to kill the boss. It's, it's... Anyway, right. Finally, we get Resident Evil 7. And it was a return to the horror. And it brought people back. And then Resident Evil 2 Remake comes up, and I think it's the best zombie horror game ever made, hands down. It was one of the best games that I have ever played. I would consider it to be the game of the year. And it's not because it's a remake. I, I really hate the fact that they call it a remake, because it's not. It's a reboot, if you think about it. Story-wise, it is still the same story, so that's fine. But they changed the gameplay completely. It's now uh, a third-person game, horror game. Um, they change the environments, they change the, the way the game works and the gameplay and all of that. So I, I wouldn't call it a remake. You know, most people, when they hear a remake, they think about, well, they improved the graphics a little bit. Maybe they gave some HD graphics and that's it. And, you know, maybe upload, uh, updated the multiplayer. But that's not what they did with Resident Evil 2. I, I don't think I need to get into it. And now Resident Evil 3 comes out. And I noticed that Capcom lied. And when game developers lie, this to me is a hint that things are going to go bad. So the lie was that they toned that, like this is what a game developer chose to tell the public. It's not, it's not something that I interpreted or you know people on the internet. No, like a game developer goes out and says, they toned down Jill's sexuality. Like they, they legitimately say this, okay? That they made Jill less sexy in order to make the character more believable. This is not a game about believability. Like literally in the first minute of the game, you have Jill driving a car from the rooftop of a building, face down, from the rooftop of a building, face down into concrete. Like should have been made human pasta if we were talking about believability. And she's just fine. And that's not like the only thing. Like throughout the entire game, she's constantly being pushed into walls and uh, solid objects at terminal velocity, and she just gets up and she's fine. So this is not a game about believability. When, when you say you tone down the sexuality of a character and you lie, chances are the developer is deep into social justice. His brain is wrought with social justice. Now, social justice isn't necessarily a bad thing, okay? Like, if you want to become a politician, you can be like AOC and you can live in a mansion if you preach social justice. It can be good for some people. But it's not good for game developers. Because if you look at the people in entertainment that are into social justice, they despise the consumer. They view the consumer as a pay piggy, and they are going to try to push you the minimum amount and charge you the maximum amount. Every single time. This is what I see with this game. People get banned on the forum for talking about things. People just, you know, like actual people paying for the product, they get banned from the forum. And that's not the lie that really bothers me. The real lie that bothers me is regarding Nemesis. Now, a lot of people liked Mr. X from Resident Evil 2 because he was really scary. He was an unstoppable force. What made Resident Evil 2 Mr. X so good was that you were trapped with him in a police station. You couldn't run away. Like You, you were forced to cohabitate into the police station with Mr. X. 
and you couldn't stop him. Like you could shoot at him and he would be stunned for a little bit, but then he would go back up. So that's that's why Mr. X was scary. And he also had an AI. He was a scripted. Like he would have like his own pathing and he would um, have his uh, patrols going from room to room trying to find you. And right? so, so when they talk about Nemesis, I didn't even think they're going to make him anything similar to Mr. X because you can't. You can't because Mr. X was, again, in the police station with you. So you were trapped with him. Resident Evil 3 takes place in a big city. So you can use the alleyways and you can run away from him, right? It doesn't make sense. Like, you, you wouldn't be able to still have that. But no, like, Capcom comes out. No one asks them to. They come out and they say that um, uh, you can outrun the Tyrant in Resident Evil 2 remake fairly easily. And I was like, what? Like, I, I played it on the, the hardest difficulty. It didn't seem fairly easily. Like, yeah, sure, after you play the game five or six times, you kind of figure out a couple of things. But the first playthrough, you can't really run. Anyway. So, he says, running can't save you from the nemesis who stalks you relentless through the zombie-ravaged streets of Raccoon City and always feels one step ahead of you. Seeing something that big and scary move so quickly is really unnerving. And then they talk about the AI and the pathing for a nemesis. They lie. They lie. Everything with nemesis is scripted. Nemesis, by the way, is really cool. I like him. But it's a lie. It's not. It doesn't have some, um, you know, interesting AI or uh, figuring out how to get to you in an unscripted way. No, like everything he does is scripted. Even like when he jumps in front of you and he's like one step in front of you, it's because that is part of the script. Uh, Nemesis is more like the Haka from Prince of Persia, I would say. Uh, you just have to run away from him and you have to dodge zombies as you're running. Now that, that is cool, I'm not saying it's not cool, but it's not horrifying. Like, you know, um, it's not uh, scary in any way. It's just like, alright, now is the time to run. And the thing that I don't like is that they, they removed... Like, like, he doesn't really appear in the game that often. Because a big chunk of the game is cut. You don't have the clock tower, you don't have the park, uh, you don't have the graveyard. Uh, like, th there are big chunks of the game. The city hall is being cut. Like, the entire game, for me, ha I I and I played it on hardcore, so this this took longer than normally, right? Because the, the zombies died slower. I, I had to constantly have zombies on the screen so I could dodge them. Like, this takes longer. I finished it in five hours. And believe me that I, I watched every cutscene. I spent, you know, time actually taking in the scenery. I didn't rush it took five hours unacceptable for a full price game five hours I, I'm really disappointed with this very disappointed with this uh, I think if you play it on uh, the normal version you can easily finish it in three or four hours and they also remove the the choices like the the previous Resident Evil had choices they removed that the choices added a little bit of replayability because uh, you would get like different endings and different uh, cutscenes and stuff like that. So it, it, it was a little bit better. They removed that. They removed the gore from the zombies. They removed a lot of things. Now, I, I'm not bothered on the fact that they used assets from Resident Evil 2. Because that's what the original Resident Evil 3 did. It came out a year later and it used a lot of assets from the first game. Which is fine. I understand. I, I don't mind it. Uh, but what I do mind is like they remove big chunks. I would have rather waited another year or waited more for a, a perfect game. And, and like here's here's the thing that really annoys me: Resident Evil Three Remake is at its best when you're in the city, and a very small part of the game you're actually in the city. The biggest part of game you're either in the hospital or you're in the uh, underground laboratory or you know like every like, or in the sewers. But very small part of the game, you're literally in the alleyways uh, trying to, to dodge zombies. Like that, that is like the best thing of the game. It's, it's just breathtaking, okay? When you start the game and you play through the tutorial and then you play a little bit longer in the city, that is just, oh my god, it's so good. It is so good. And then you go into the sewers and it's so bad. So bad. I, I just like, oh God, you know, I wish I wasn't right. I wish I wasn't every single time I see social justice being uh, 
the the root cause like and again like the dog whistles the dog whistles and they don't have to be overt it's just the dog whistles that they say i'm like oh shit this game isn't going to be good or or if it is going to be good it's not going to be as good as it's supposed to be and again like the only reason this game is still okay and i would recommend it to people is because it uses a lot of things from resident evil 2 and that is an amazing game so it, it's really difficult to mess it up uh, but I'm pretty sure if they would keep doing these remakes and continue down this path uh, over the course of one or two more games, you you would just, again, reach the Resident Evil 6 uh, bottom. Uh, it's uh, very disappointing. Uh, and probably because of all the hype, I really am a big Resident Evil fan and I expected a lot more. Uh, maybe I'll do a Let's Play and I can talk about it as I'm playing. Uh, I'll have to save some money to buy this on the PlayStation because uh, my computer can't handle, like the processor can't handle uh, the um, the streaming. But I heard that like really, really, really disappointed because it's not a horror game. Like I, I'm not scared. And again, like I played the Resident Evil 3 original recently. That is a scary game. I mean, it's not scary anymore. Like when I was a teenager and I would go like, whoa. Uh, it's scary because it makes you feel uneasy. It, it makes you feel unnerving. You're, you're, you know, you get that sense of, how should I say, like dread when you're playing. And I think a lot of it is due to the sound effects and uh, uh, the, the moaning of the zombies and all that. Um, but when I played this one, it's like... I, just action scene after action scene, you know, all the cutscenes are over the top with like Jill uh, dropping down a flaming building and, you know, like all this nonsense, which even the Resident Evil 3 used to have to a certain degree, like uh, that there was that uh, place at the gas station, I remember, where Jill just runs over a couple of cars and stuff explodes behind her like that. Yeah, that, that used to exist, but was in a, such a small amount, it was unnoticeable. Uh, so that when you do f find it, you're like, whoa. But now when every single cutscene has Jill doing something spectacular, and, and, and don't even get me started with uh, the dodge mechanic. The dodge mechanic is the biggest cancer in the entire game. So when a zombie lunges at you, you can dodge and you go into bullet time if you dodge properly. And dodging properly isn't that hard. So you go into Valentine <laughs> and... It's, it turns into a Mad Max type of game. It's like, what the? Max Payne, sorry, not Mad Max. Max Payne type of game. It's like, what what, what on earth are they doing? Um, and, and, you know, like a lot of people are saying, well, you can remove the option. You, you really can't because you need it against Nemesis. You need to dodge when you're fighting Nemesis. So, so you need to have it. Uh, and you can say, well, don't use it, but it's tempting, you know, if it's there. Like, I would have really preferred if they wouldn't uh, make uh, make you have to use it. And at least when you play on hardcore, they would completely remove the option. Like, throughout the game, I didn't have any problems finding weapons and ammo and health. In fact, like, I was so stuck up with all these weapons towards the end. It was ridiculous. I, I think I finished the game with, with so much extra ammo. That didn't happen in Resident Evil 2. So, yeah, I'm really disappointed. Very disappointed. Should you buy this game? Uh, no, wait for uh, wait for a sale. Punish these evil developers uh, for, for doing this. And, and I, I don't even think it's the developers that are to blame. It's the marketing team. It's the marketing team that hyped up this game um, and probably rushed it. They, they, they most definitely rushed this game. This game needed a lot more time for it to be complete. Uh, this game came out unfinished, a lot of missing stuff. Like if I look at a remake from a six hour game, because probably that's how much it would take me to beat the previous Resident Evil. I would expect you to add some extra things rather than remove them. You know, I, I would have loved to see something more. Like the subway station have a level in it. You know, if you're going to, to add the subway station there. Or I don't know have something taking place in a factory or something like just why, why is it okay to remove things no i want to see more things rather than less anyway right uh, rant over